Welcome to another episode of Field Phone Ops. Today we're going to discuss the German FF33 field telephone and how many of its uh, capabilities and features were carried forward and copied by the modern field phones and how it became the grandfather or father at least of the modern field phones. This is a German FF33 field phone. It was uh, developed by the Nazis in Germany in uh, the early 30s, 1933, when they were rearming. They had to replace their old World War II, I guess, legacy field phone equipment with something new. So they contacted the Siemens company to design them a field phone, and this is what they came up with. This was pretty remarkable and advanced for the time. It used the a Bakelite case. Bakelite was the wonder material of the time. Had this writing plate on here, so you could write a station number, call sign, phonetic alphabet, two-piece case. This little grill piece was right there, so you could hear the, the bell ringing inside it. It also had this. You open this up, and there's two holes where you could plug pass cords into. The pass cords allowed you to hook two phones together to do troubleshooting or work. They also had some auxiliary and ancillary equipment for their FF33s and switch ports so if you could plug into the phone and that's how you connected it up. Hand crank one here in the end had a similar thing to open it. We'll go ahead and open it up. Inside the lid, schematic diagram of the handset and the inside. Handset itself was Bakelite with the push to talk. It was removable which was something new at the time. Move the hand crank set it down. The battery went right inside here. It was like a rather large square uh, dry cell battery connected on these little screw down terminals right there. The field wire connection was made from the end. You actually brought your field wire in here and connected to one of these two terminals. It was designed to be operated with a single field wire system where you connected one piece of field wire and ran that to your other end. Then the other end plugged into a stake that you drove in the ground. So it used a ground return which wasn't good because it was easy interception. As a matter of fact, they had a rule that if you used these phones within three kilometers of the front lines, you had to use two pieces of field wire and you couldn't do the one wire and ground stake trick. Uh, it came with a headphones that plugged in and a throat microphone so you could use it sort of in a hands-free mode. Basically how the phone was used was you'd bring your field wire in like this and your handset cord out like this and this, these used to be soft rubber, they're pretty hard now, these rubber pieces right here, and then close the handset over the wires like that, and then for the cover the handset. And the handset rests upon it like that. The handset had little standoffs on it so it wouldn't key and drive your battery down. The Germans actually manufactured 1.6 million of these during the war. So after the war, there were quite a few countries that continued to use them for their military because, well, they're pretty rugged and reliable, and they had them. Uh, the uh, countries that didn't use some of them removed. There's a little spot right here, or a symbol, or a stamp. It's the uh, Nazi eagle holding the swastika that was stamped in to the, the plastic on the fitting right there. And a lot of countries took and scraped to ground that off or took something hot and stamped over it so you get rid of it as part of their denazification project. Well, during the war itself, the Russians captured a whole bunch of FF-33s and basically reverse engineered them and came up with this. And this is a TAI-43. That's actually a Polish copy. But the, the Russians basically took it apart, reverse engineered and copied it. Their first versions came in a wood case later on in the war and post-war they started using Bakelite and it uses a, uh, a handset it can do the the single wire uh, field wire method with a ground stake has a test button right there to test the crank put hook the wires together and push and crank has a removable handset plug similar to what the German one did did not have the cloth case, cloth uh, cord though. The Germans used the cloth cord on them because they stayed flexible in cold weather. Then when the war was finally over and the Czechs started making their own field phones, the 
Czech communists actually copied. This is pretty much their copy of an FF-33. A little bit smaller. Bakelite case. They put a nice carry handle on it. Has the writing surface on it. There's a the little grill piece so you can hear the, the, the ringer. And here's the plug. The checks in, in, installed the plug so you can use the pass cords inside there. We'll open it up. You can actually see here's the pass cords right here. So you can plug two phones together. Cloth cords. Checks did the same thing. Use the cloth cord because it, it holds up good in cold weather. Detachable handset. Pops right off. And the Czechs pretty well copied the uh, the German one. It's a pretty good copy that the Czechs did right there. The Czechs actually used these phones into the uh, 1970s. They were so good. They're just good solid field guns based on a, uh, a fairly rugged German FF-33. The uh, the Russian phone I showed you, the Soviet phone. The Soviets actually. Soviet and certain Warsaw Pact countries were actually using into the 1980s. Get this wrapped around here correctly. Then, when the Bundeswehr, the West Germans were allowed to build their own army and start rearming in the late 1950s, they designed their own field phone based on the FF-33. Writing surface, fanatic alphabet, bakelite case, has a little cover on front so you could plug in your pass cords. And the West German phone has pass cords that comes with it. Uh, they again copied the cloth cord, detachable handset because it works. Uh, the uh, West Germans actually used these phones in the 1980s as part of their, uh, their field phone communication system. Then, not to be outdone, the East Germans copied the FF-33. Here it is right here. This is the East German version of it, or what the East Germans came up with. But it helped a help bit for writing space. Um, they didn't do the uh, hand crank. They have a fixed hand crank. They have a removable handset, and they use the patch cords like everybody has the other phones did. Test button. So as you can see, a lot of the features that came out of the uh, FF-33 were, were, were one-time, first-time features for this were carried forward in a lot of the other field phones. This field phone right here will actually, it will accept a check, it will accept a ring, it will send a ring, but it won't do audio. So I don't think I'm going to tear into it to figure out why the audio doesn't work. I don't want to disassemble it. It was made in 1942, and I think it's in pretty darn good shape for being that old. So uh, I just use it as a display phone. So that's it right there. That's the German FF-33 and how it led to the advancement of field phones. I hope you enjoy it.